You know, rsync is actually one of my favorite Linux commands because it's such a powerful utility that you can use to copy files from one Linux instance to another. In fact, it doesn't even have to be to another Linux instance because you could use it to copy files from your local Linux instance to a flash drive or a backup hard drive. Basically, rsync allows you to copy files from point A to point B. And you could basically have point A be your Linux instance and point B be whatever, backup device, another server, uh, you name it. So it's definitely one of my favorite commands. And since it's so powerful, I can't possibly explore every single option in this video. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give you guys an overview of rsync and how it works. And this is actually going to be the final video in this series because I think at this point, I showed you guys everything that you need to know to have an understanding of the Linux command line. Are there other commands that I haven't gone over? Well, of course, there's hundreds of commands out there. I can't possibly cover them all, but I do feel that I have gone over all of the prominent commands that you really need to know, the commands that you need to have in your tool set. So join me one last time as I show you the rsync command in my Linux commands for beginners series. So here we are at my terminal and I'm on my local Linux shell again. This is my prompt that I've been using these days. Then I have a tab right here, which actually has some output from a previous video still there. But basically this is an Ubuntu server on Linode. Now of course you can actually copy files to uh, one local location to another. So it doesn't even have to be a remote location. But in this video, to show you the basics, that's exactly what I'm going to do, is show you how to copy files from point A to point B. Now I was using some ROM files in my ROM collection for retro games, so that's why you see I have a NES directory and a Yoshi file right here. Those are just the files that I had available at the time. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those though, to start fresh. And now we have nothing here on that server. In order to copy files to the server, I need the IP address. We can get that from IP space A. And then we can see the IP address is right here. So some of this output is wrapped due to this text size here, but basically you're looking for your IP address and you can see that I have that right here. I'm gonna go back to my local instance. And if I do a list storage here, I have all kinds of things because this is my actual laptop right here and I've been using RetroPie files. RetroPie is a popular solution for playing classic games in emulated form. We can see the directory right here. That doesn't matter because whatever you're using rsync for, it doesn't have to be games. You can copy anything. I'm just using that as an example. So I'm gonna basically go into that folder. We see that we have a ROMs directory in there. If I do an LS on that, you can see they have all kinds of things. I'm gonna go into the ROMs folder. You can see that's my current working directory. And what I want to do is copy the NES directory, which has all kinds of games in there, to my server. But rsync is one of those commands that if you're not careful, you could actually mess things up. I'll, I'll show you what I mean in here in just a moment. So to be safe, I'm just going to copy the NES directory, do copy-r. NES, I'm going to copy it to my home directory. I'm going to go back to my home directory. You can see that I have the NES directory right here. That's so that I don't mess up the original. Now what I want to do is rsync dash r NES, that's the directory that I want to copy. I'm going to use my name at and the IP address. That's where I want to copy it to, and I want to copy it to slash home slash j. So the r is recursive because the NES directory is a directory. I want to copy not just the directory, but everything inside of it. The user I want to use for the connection is mine, j, at. That's the IP address of the remote server. I'm copy, copying things to, colon, and then the home directory, which looks very similar to the SCP command that we used in the previous video. But let's see what happens. It's asking for my password. And that's the password of the remote end and I'll press enter. And it's doing something, but what exactly is it doing? Is it copying the folder over? Let's see. Now I did delete the folder here, so let's see if it's back. And it is. 
and we have stuff inside there. So even though we, we have no output, it actually did copy everything over. Why don't we have any output? Well, that's because we have to use the dash V option for verbose to let the rsync command know that we actually want to see the output as it copies it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this folder. See that it is in fact gone. And right now I'm going to go ahead and reissue this command. Put in the password. And now we see that it actually is copying everything over. Well, actually it already was copying everything over, but now we can actually see the output as it does it. We'll get back to the video shortly, but I'd like to take a moment to thank my sponsor, Linode. I definitely recommend you check out Linode. Linode has a special offer for subscribers of Learn Linux TV. If you watch my channel, no doubt you're interested in tinkering with things like computers, Linux, servers, and the like. So that's why Linode wants your help testing out their new data center coming to Sydney, Australia by the end of 2019. Sign up to become a beta tester by visiting the link in the description and you'll be notified by email when the beta opens for testing. By joining the beta program, you'll even have the opportunity to be the first to test other Linode products in the future. Be sure to check the I want to be a beta tester box when you sign up. Be sure to check out Linode and let's get back to the video. Now it gives us some information which is actually useful. It tells us the speed up, the total size, and it gave us a list of all the files that it's actually copying as it was copying them. So we can simplify this command a bit, just like we can with SCP. We could take the path off if we're copying it to our home directory. We can also take off the username because I'm logged in as the user I'm using to copy files with. Same like SCP, how in the previous video we simplified the command, we're basically doing the same thing with this. So I'll press enter, put in the password, now, what I'm going to do is show you guys another reason why rsync rocks. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the file again, just to start fresh. So, the NES directory is gone. And then what I'm going to do is recopy that over, but I'm going to change the options around a little bit. I'm going to use dash A, V, Z as my options, and I'll show you exactly what that does. Press Enter password and it's copying everything over uh, let's see let's see what happens let's recall that command there it is and basically just to make sure it works the NES directory is there and so is all the contents so I used AVZ what is A so to show you what A is, let's take a look at the man page. We'll search for it. Here it is, guys, but it's wrapped a little bit, so let me just go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Hopefully you could still see it. A is archive mode, which basically gives it all of these options right here. So recursive is already part of it. And without going into too much detail, it's going to make sure that the permissions are the same, the timestamps are the same. We want everything on the other end to be the same, right down to the permissions, ownership, and so on. And if you're curious what all of these options do that are a part of dash A, so if you use dash A, you're getting all of these highlighted options at the same time. You could go ahead and look at the man page and see for yourself. For example, we could see that R is recursive. Here it is and so on. But I also added Z. So recall the command. Z is basically compress. That compresses things when you're transferring, which could be handy if you're going through a slower link. That might save you a little bit of time. V, as you know, is verbose because we want to see everything that's being copied. So again, if I press enter, It's just not going to copy anything because it's archive mode. It's going to make everything exactly the same. And the other end is exactly the same because we really haven't changed anything. So 
If I go ahead and rm NES, and I'll remove that, and I'll also remove randomly yoshi.nes, which is actually in the NES directory, so I should type that correctly. So I, I removed two files from the remote end. I go back here to the source. I'm going to recall that command and see what happens. It only copied two things. It copied the things that were missing on the other end. Yoshi.nes and this Zen Intergalactic Ninja, I deleted those, and since they were missing on the other end, when our sync was ran again, it saw that those files were missing, and since its default is to make you know, the other end the same as the source, it's going to recopy those files back. And our sync is actually pretty smart, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go ahead and rm nes yoshi.nes, and what I'm going to do is echo hello world. I'm going to redirect that to nes yoshi.nes. If I list the storage on nes, we actually do have yoshi.nes right here. But that's not actually the same file. That's just a text file I copied some string text into. Let's see if, Yo if uh, our sync is smart enough to know that that file isn't quite the same thing and recopy it. Let's see what happens. And it was. It saw that the file on the remote end was not the same as the local. That file was present on the remote end. But again, that was just a standard text file. I deleted, deleted the original and recreated it with an echo command, which of course is not the same file. Our sync knows that, and it went ahead and copied that file over to the other end. Now there's one option of our sync I want to basically direct your attention to if I go to the man page for it. Probably have to make this a little bit smaller. Let's look up the dash E option. The dash E option here allows you to specify the remote shell to use, which is basically meaning that you can specify SSH. But we didn't do that. So how did that copy over? Well, actually, our sync defaults to SSH. We didn't tell it to use SSH. It's actually using SSH for the file transfer itself by default. So if we didn't have SSH installed on the other end, the SSH server, this command would not have worked. Now I'm going to show you another variation here of the rsync command. On the other end, I'm going to delete this folder in its entirety. And then switch back here to, to the local terminal. So I'll recall the original command here, rsync-avz, that's the folder name, and Again, that's the IP address I'm copying it to. But what I'm going to do is add another option, dash dash remove source files. I'm going to add that to the command. And again, I deleted it from here, so it's not present anymore. And then what I'm going to do is copy that over again. Password. And again, it's going to copy the files over, same as before. All right, so what happened? Well, let's go ahead and go over here and, you know, the file or the folder was created with all the files inside. But here on the original source, I'll do ls and I have nes there, but there's nothing inside. I used remove source files. So that's useful if you want to move the files from point A to point B. This can be potentially destructive though, so you want to basically be careful. And then there's one more option I want to show you guys. So what I'm going to do is copy that NES directory back to its original location. You see the NES directory is back. And now I'm going to use the same command again, remove source files, and let's go ahead and for fun, we're going to remove it from here. And I'm going to add yet another option here. I'm going to do dash dash dry dash run. 
So it's the same command, but I added that one option. And if nothing else, I definitely want you guys to remember this dry run option. It's extremely important, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but I'll go ahead and enter the command. Let's run it. All right, so, wow, that was super fast, wasn't it? That was almost instantaneous that it copied all those files over. So what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened because there's nothing here. So if I do ls against the, uh, the NES directory, those files are still present. And again, the command I used was this one. Now dry run, as you probably already assumed, is just a test. It doesn't actually run, but it does give you output on what it would do if it were to run. Now it did ask for the password of the remote end because it does need to check what the remote end has. And that way it'll know what it's going to do. It gives me the output of all the files that it would copy, but it's a dry run. It's not actually going to do anything. And the reason why dry run is so important is because it gives you a preview of what rsync is going to do. So any rsync command which may overwrite or remove files from either end, I highly recommend you try that with a dry run first before you actually do it. And again, it's dash dash dry dash run. This option right here to do a dry run, extremely important. So now that I know that that works, or at least the output is what I expected, I can remove the dry run and let's do it for real. Now it's actually doing it. The files are removed from the source and they're present here on the target. So the file, or excuse me, the folder is still here. It's just empty. So I can do touch NES test file. I could do rsync. Let's do a dry run again. Press enter. So it connected to the, to the remote end here and it basically knows test file was missing from the target. And the dry run is telling me that if I was to run this for real, then it's going to move this file over. Since I use remove source file, then that file is going to be gone. So now that I know that it's doing what I expect, I can remove dry run, press enter. It copied it over. It basically removed it from the local end. And we can see that the test file is indeed there. Now the rsync command gets way more involved than this. This is just the beginning. rsync is a very, very valuable tool and there's all kinds of cool stuff that you can do with it. So I recommend that you check out some additional examples on the usage of rsync because I do recommend that you learn it. It's a very important tool for every Linux administrator to know. And with that said, that you know, here comes the end of the Linux commands for beginners series. Now, of course, I'll be doing more tutorials, so it's not the end of my tutorials, it's just the end of this particular series. But I'll show you guys other commands and other tricks and all kinds of things in future tutorial videos, either in another series or maybe even in some standalone videos. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and the next tutorials I make, you'll be the first to see them. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. I hope this series was very helpful for you and I will see you in the next video, whatever that might be. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button and if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.